Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be going over the latest RCP or Real Clear Politics polling averages for every single swing state, including the third party candidates and independents like RFK, Jill Stein, and even Cornell West. That, that all show Donald Trump decimating Joe Biden this November. But before we get started with the map, make sure you guys are subscribed, click the bell so you don't miss out on my content, press the like button, give this video a thumbs up. Also, we have memberships if you are interested, you can find a link to that in the description section. Now back to the topic of today's video. If the election is held today, according to Poly Market, Donald Trump has a 65% chance of winning this election to Joe Biden's 8%, guys, 8%. Biden has basically the same amount of chance Donald Trump did just four years ago back in 2020. They're basically giving them the same amount of chance. And Biden is actually polling worse than Kamala Harris, his own vice president. Kamala Harris has a 20% chance at defeating Donald Trump to Joe Biden's 8%. And polls and polls time and time again consistently show that Kamala Harris performs better than Joe Biden. Basically, Joe Biden has stated that he will drop out if he has a medical condition, which he just got COVID recently. And Chuck Schumer wants to, you know, delay the Democratic primaries, which might show that Joe Biden actually might drop out. But I think it's laughable that the Democratic Party thinks Kamala Harris is going to perform better than Biden because he's just simply not. And even if the polls show that, I think she's worse than, uh, you know, Hillary Clinton because Hillary Clinton at least is someone who won the Democratic nomination. Kamala Harris was chosen by Biden. She was appointed. She was not chosen by the Democratic voters. She did horrible in the primaries. And that goes to show you that the true Democratic voters do not want Kamala Harris, which is why, in my opinion, I think Biden would perform better than someone like Kamala Harris, which is the exact opposite of what the polls are suggesting. And I'm going to rule out Gavin Newsom. He's not going to run. Even if Biden is replaced, it's not going to be Gavin Newsom because he has stated time and time again that he is not going to run in 2024. I think it's probably going to be someone like Gretchen Whitmer if Biden does end up stepping aside. And as of right now, Biden has a 75% chance of stepping aside, nearly three-fourths, or actually it is three-fourths, uh, on the dot. And this number is going to only increase and rise because of the latest news that Biden has COVID, which will increase his chances. And you can see here that Donald Trump has a 64% chance to Kamala Harris's 21 to Joe Biden's 7%. So Biden's numbers actually decrease. It really depends what you take a look at. And so as of today, we're going to be taking a look at RCP averages and filling out the map overall take a look at some of these probability ratings for each battleground and swing state for example nevada donald trump has a 71 percent chance of winning this state to joe biden or whoever the democratic nominee 29 percent and joe biden being at the very you know highest top of the ticket can hurt these down ballot races for example in the senate the governorship and also in the house of representatives so joe biden's actually hurting everybody else not only himself and even in arizona donald trump has the same amount of you know chance of winning this state just how he does in nevada and texas he has over 90 percent chance of winning this state florida is now a solid red state even in georgia guys biden won this state and he only has a 24 percent chance of winning this north carolina 73 percent for donald trump and virginia in which biden won it by over 10 percent he only has two-thirds chance of winning the state and the rest belt in pennsylvania biden was supposed to do very well in 2020 he only won it by 1.2 percent so he's actually overestimated in terms of polling he only has a 40 percent chance so donald trump is supposed to win the state in 2024 in which he he was underestimated so realistically he might even win it by more this time around than just 60 percent even in michigan this was the bluest rust belt state of the most important three ones and biden has a 41 percent chance of donald trump's 59 percent guys this was the bluest rust belt state and biden is trailing donald trump wisconsin was the reddest rust belt state and donald trump has a 63 percent chance in this state even in minnesota in which biden won by seven percentage points biden has a 59 percent chance of winning this state which you could argue is very low for a state especially like minnesota and New Hampshire it's slightly higher at 63%, but still that is very low. And also he could be overestimated just how he, you know, he was in 2020. Donald Trump was underestimated ultimately at the end of the day. Even a state like New Mexico, Biden has a 72% chance if you take a look at all of these, you know, major swing and battleground states. And now we go to RCP and we take a look at Joe Biden's job approval rating on the issues that matters to voters the most. For example, the economy he is underwater by net negative nearly 20 points, guys. He's only approved of by 39% and he's disapproved of by nearly 59% percent on the issue of the economy foreign policy uh it's even worse 27 percent underwater in the gutter absolutely horrendous his approval rating is 34 percent in terms of foreign policy to his disapproval rating of 61.5 percent 
and the immigration, actually one of the worst issues out of any other, uh, the border crisis, which he's underwater by net negative 31% if you round up. So his approval rating is at 31.5% on this issue, and his disapproval rating is at 62%. Uh, percent ultimately, which is just disastrous. And also inflation is extremely bad, just like the border, net negative 28 you know, percent in the gutter underwater. These are losing numbers, guys. Even in his approval rating is under 40 percent, currently at like 39. At some point, it is actually 38, which is disastrous for uh, an incumbent seeking re-election, guys. We're talking about an incumbent who's below 40 percent in terms of approving. You actually can see non-incumbents having higher approval ratings than Joe Biden, which is pretty bad. So now let's fill out the electoral map according to RCP averages. And as you can see, Florida is solid red. RCP has Trump winning it by over 10%, as well as Texas is actually going to be likely for Trump. He's winning it by nearly like 9 to 10 percentage points on the averages in there. And Iowa and Ohio are now considered solid red states. Trump is getting double digits according to RCP and also uh, 538. You can argue that as well. And even in some of these typical solid blue states, such as New York or even New Jersey, Joe Biden is pulling within single digits, which is horrible for him because he's supposed to win them by, you know, 16 to 23 percent. Start off with Colorado for this video. According to RCP averages, Biden has a lead of a little bit over slightly six percentage points, which is which is a likely margin. He has 44 percent to Donald Trump's. 37.5% in the state of Colorado. Keep in mind, he won the state by over 10 points in 2020. I believe like 13 percentage points. And now all of a sudden, his you know numbers have significantly decreased to just a little bit over slightly six and you know 6.5 percentage points, which is bad for Joe Biden. And in my opinion, if you put any other Democratic candidate for the nomination other than Joe Biden, they would win Colorado by a solid margin because this state is getting bluer. Believe it or not, they keep gaining in terms of new Democratic voters. But the reason why this state does not seem like it's getting bluer is because Joe Biden is the nominee. And realistically, if you put someone else like Gretchen Whitmer, for example, this state will overwhelmingly support her by 10%, in my opinion. And even New Mexico, you can argue that is a lean to likely as well. We have internal polling coming inside from the Democratic Party who have they refuse to, you know, release these polls because it shows that Joe Biden is on track to possibly lose this state. Donald Trump is coming in with within the margin of error in some of these likely to, you know, comfortably even solid blue Democratic states. And even in the state of New York, guys, in which Biden overwhelmingly won the state by 23 points just four years ago, all of a sudden, according to RSP, averages 7.5% in this five-way race with all the third-party candidates included. According to Siena College, he's at 8%. According to the Hill and Emerson, highly, highly rated polls, they are trustworthy. Biden's at 7%, a likely margin, and a typical, what you would see, a solid blue state. Now, all of a sudden, New York is within the margin of error, which you can see as in 2022, as an example. Example, Lee Zeldin almost won this state. Kathy Hochul only won by six points. She almost lost. So you can use 2022 as an example, you know, and maybe Donald Trump can perform in line, you know, in par with uh, Lee Zeldin. We'll see at the end of the day this November. And then as for New Jersey, when you factor in all these third party candidates, the latest poll from the Hill and Emerson College with 1,000 registered voters has Biden winning this state by five points, guys, five points. Come on. He won this state by 16 percent just four years ago. And all of a sudden in the state of New Jersey, he has a lead of 5%. That is a lean margin, not even likely. It went from solid blue to lean blue. That shows you how bad Joe Biden is of incumbent. He's extremely unpopular. One of the most, you know, disapproved of presidents of all time in modern U.S. history. And even in North Carolina, Donald Trump has a lead of exactly seven percentage points by a likely margin in the state of North Carolina. Keep in mind, it was so close in 2020, Trump only won it by a margin of 1.5%. And now he's winning it by six points greater of the margin. So he's actually expanding his lead, which is greater than his 2016 margin in this state. And keep in mind, Donald Trump received 10 million more votes in 2020 than he did in 2016. So he actually did better, even though he still lost because Biden had that high turnout because of COVID, because of BLM. And also Trump was limited because we had less third party candidates which is what helped him in 2016. We have more now, so it really goes to Donald Trump's benefit ultimately at the end of the day. If Donald Trump gets at least 70 million you know, votes, not even 74, he's more than likely going to win re-election as well as the popular vote, which is what the polls are saying. Even in Georgia, with this five-way race, Donald Trump has a lead of 4.4 percentage points. Yet again, this is slightly closer than a state like North Carolina, but still, it's going to be a lean margin uh, instead of likely, obviously. But I think if Donald Trump does 
you know, perform better in the Atlanta metropolitan area, the suburbs here, I think it's probably going to win this day as well. As with African-American voters, Trump is nearly pulling at 20 percent among black support overall. And so I think that can help him, especially considering that Joe Biden is performing very poorly. Also, I believe Georgia passed a new law or legislation that will require all absentee ballots, you know, put in by 8 p.m., which would, the state will be called faster on election day, which would go to Donald Trump's benefit. And this is shocking. Donald Trump in the state of Virginia, according to averages on Real Clear Politics, has the advantage by 0.4%. This is devastating for Joe Biden. This is a state in which Biden won by 10 points just four years ago. And you fast forward four years later at this point in time in which Donald Trump is winning the state of Virginia. This is a roughly over 10, you know, over 10 point shift or swing in favor of the former president, guys. This is disastrous. His lead is even greater, according to Everson College, which is highly rated pollster A+, I believe, on 538. With 1,000 registered voters, Donald Trump is decimating Joe Biden in the state of Virginia. So ultimately, Donald Trump is on track to win Virginia in this election. Who would have thought that Donald Trump, out of all people, would win Virginia if this was in 2022? Who would have thought, guys? He got endorsed here by the governor, Glenn Youngkin, who's extremely popular, and I think that can sway the race in favor of Donald Trump. But as for the state of Nevada, Donald Trump has a 5% lead in this state overall. I think, I think he's able to flip Washoe County as well as perform very well in the Vegas area or Clark County among Hispanic voters as well. That would be key to his victory, and I think he'll do just exactly that, and that's exactly what the polls are reflecting. So ultimately, Donald Trump's going to win Nevada by a lean to arguably a likely margin in this year's election cycle. But then as for Arizona, this is a border state, so that issue, by the way, Biden is performing the worst out of any other, which would really go to Donald Trump's benefit, and it is showing exactly that. The polls reflect exactly that when it comes to immigration. According to RCP averages, Donald Trump has a lead of over 7 percentage points in the state of Arizona, in which Biden won this, keep in mind, just four years ago. And now it's comfortable, you know, going to Donald Trump by a likely margin. This is greater of a margin than the state of Nevada, which you can argue that Arizona is slightly bluer than Nevada is, but all of a sudden Arizona is actually red, according to the polls which is kind of strange. This is literally looking like an electoral landslide. And lastly, now we move on to some of these Rust Belt states. When you include Kennedy, West, and Stein, Donald Trump has a lead of three percentage points according to RCP averages in the state of Wisconsin, which keep in mind this was the reddest Rust Belt state in 2020 and in 2016, I believe, as well. And so this is going to be considered a lean margin if the election was held today. This is literally looking like Biden is getting decimated this November if he is not replaced, which I think he should be replaced, but not with Kamala Harris because I think she is worse. Probably Gretchen Wimmer, who would probably win her own state of Michigan, which is why she has the advantage with the Rust Belt, in my opinion. And speaking of Michigan, guys, Donald Trump has a lead in this state, but it's obviously smaller than any other state, but still pretty impressive considering that Biden won this by three points in 2020 almost. This was the bluest Rust Belt state out of the three. He's up by 0.6%. 42 to Joe Biden's 41%. This is going to be considered a tilt margin. Under percentage point, it's going to get extremely close. Remember, folks, that Donald Trump, who is not the incumbent, received more votes than Joe Biden, who is the incumbent. And he had a real primary challenger in Nikki Haley. Joe Biden had no primary contest on top of the 100,000 people that already voted uncommitted in the Democratic primaries in the state of Michigan. And then in Pennsylvania, in which Donald Trump literally got shot in the state, Butler County, which can drive the turnout in Pittsburgh for Donald Trump. He's winning this state by over three percentage points, similar to his margin in the state of Wisconsin. This is going to be considered lean for Donald Trump. Keep in mind that Joe Biden won this by 1.2 percent. And now you would see that this state has a four percent shift roughly to the right in favor of Donald Trump. He basically has the Rust Belt locked under control. And we have two more states to cover before we end off this video, Minnesota and New Hampshire. Three percentage points in this state. He has 48% to Donald Trump's 45%. So he doesn't even get 50 in this scenario. So with that being said, he's going to win this state by a lean margin. So Biden, surprisingly, is actually doing better in New Hampshire than he is in Virginia. This is why I think the polls are completely trash. Because he won Virginia by a greater margin than he did in New Hampshire just four years ago. But all of a sudden now, New Hampshire is apparently bluer than Virginia, which just makes absolutely no sense. Let me know if you agree with that in the comment section down below. 
And this state is also very anti-incumbent. They favor the challenger, which is not going to go in favor of Joe Biden. Obviously, it's going to help Donald Trump in the long run. In the state of Minnesota, Joe Biden has a lead of three percentage points, similar to his, you know, average lead in the state of New Hampshire, which these states basically vote in the same direction. Both of them went to Biden by the exact similar same margins in 2020 of seven points. Even in 2016, both of them had the exact same margins of under percentage point for Hillary Clinton. So both New Hampshire and Minnesota vote very similarly, as we can see. Biden's going to win it by a lean margin according to RSP averages. But if you take a look at 538, the margin is very actually closer. And Donald Trump's coming in with a margin of error in this state. So this is the finalized map according to RSP averages if the election was held. Today, post-Trump assassination attempt, obviously, 326 for Donald Trump to Joe Biden's 212, which would send him off to retirement. So let me know your overall thoughts and opinions on the map in the comment section down below. And don't forget to subscribe, click the bell, press the like button. Also, uh, don't forget we have memberships. You can find a link to that in the description section if you are interested. That's pretty much it. Thank you, everyone, for watching.